friend of India, good friend of ours, very, very personal friend of mine. Okay, Dr. Sergio, welcome again. Thank you so much for consenting to be here. And I formally present to you Dr. Akhilesh Sharma right now from Chandigarh. By the way, Dr. Akhilesh Sharma, sir, sir's mm -hmm. daughter is getting married on 24th of April. That is after oh. two days from now. So despite, <laughs> despite such a schedule, he consented to be there, sir. Uh, it is very, very heartwarming. Very, yes. very heartwarming. Very good, very good. Congratulations. Sorry we cannot be in India for the celebration. Next time we will be there. Yes, sir, sure. <laughs> Even in India, a lot of people could not participate because only 20 people were allowed to participate in the wedding, sir. Wow. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> but yes. it was nice to meet you, Dr. Sahio. And uh, a pleasure. I think we met many years ago in Jamnagar. You are right. You are right. Yes. <laughs> that will be maybe in the year 2001. Yes. Yes. Around that time. Yes. 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 I remember. We were quite young, you and me <laughs> at that time. Not that, not, not that you have grown old, you are becoming, <laughs> you are becoming younger with Ayurveda, I would say right, so. Right, right, right. I would say so. Yeah. So, uh, in fact, first time I met Dr. Sergio in a conference in Indira Gandhi National Open University. It was an Indo-Latin American conclave in the year 2008. Wow. If you remember. Yes, yes, I remember that. Yes, first, yes, yes. Yes, first time. <laughs> first time. And uh, and since then, we were like, you know, conversing, chit-chatting. And then uh, three years back, Dr. Sergio had visited Chennai. And very graciously, he was there with us on a dinner. So it was very, very nice to have him there. And then we are meeting him virtually today. That's right. That's right. Yes. It, it is a great pleasure to share with all our friends from India. Huh. Now, uh, Dr. Akhilesh Sharma, Nilsa, uh, Suresh, Sanjeev, Kundan, Ulhas, and uh, Priti. Yes. Uh, I will uh, formally present one by one each one of them. Uh, Mr. Sanjeev Jain, he is a <clears throat> specialist and business developer in the industry of cosmetics, herbal technology, and pharma. Sanjeev Jain, sir, thank you so much for presenting us to Dr. Akhilesh Sharma. And because of you, we got to know Dr. Akhilesh, sir. Thank you again, right? Uh, Nilsa Gonzalez is managing partner of Inlays Panama City, a great colleague, colleague, a good friend, Nilsa, thank you for joining. Uh, Professor Suresh Maria Selvam is one of our partner in LAYS. Professor Suresh is a specialist in disaster management, social entrepreneur, scholar, and advisor. So a great friend, a family friend indeed. Thank you, Suresh, sir. Professor Suresh has been closely attached in developing curriculum on academics in two largest private universities of India, SRM and VIT Valor. So this is, this is an added information for all of us. Next is Dr. Ulas sir. Dr. Ulas sir is a specialist in community health, an advisor, a medical practitioner, and a great friend, a family friend. Dr. Ulas sir, welcome. Preeti is a specialist in language in Spanish, translation and interpretation into Spanish, and writer, and coincidentally, my wife. She's in Chennai. <laughs> that I like that word, coincidentally. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So, without, 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 without we, we might be waiting for our other very lovely friend, John Sundar, sir, to join. And uh, here, here, Jupiter, sir, is joining. Jupiter, sir, is from Shivakasi and also one of the managing partner and co-founder of Inlays. He's a financial consultant, 
advisor and a trade advisor so welcome sir jupiter sir hello jupiter sir can you hear me right okay jupiter sir can you can you hear okay no problem so we will be going straight to the topic i would just request that this meeting nilsa you and me will have to take care of the timing we have to strictly finish this meeting in another 90 minutes precisely 90 minutes after 80 minutes we will be start we will start winding up so the winding up process will be for 10 minutes and in 90 minutes will we will wind up yeah thank you so much ladies and gentlemen uh object <coughs> the topic of this uh, of this meeting i think it um you got muted okay there we go so <clears throat> the topic of this session this interactive session and ayurveda is medicines and research of ayurveda in latin america opportunities understanding and challenges in its use and promotion nilsa i hope that we have started the recording thank you in spanish as we can frame it Medicamentos ayurvédicos e investigación en América Latina, oportunidades, comprensión y desafíos en su uso y promoción. So this could be this will be our perspective of of looking at things in analyzing. Objective of this session is Ayurveda, medicines and research as we said. remedios ayurvédicos e investigaciones we will only look into the curative element of ayurveda that is elementos y componentes curativos curación integral de ayurveda in spanish well being element in ayurveda as yoga nutrition will be taken up in our next interactive session that we will be holding up soon so uh may i welcome dr sergio lais suarez formally here a well known ayurveda specialist and yoga practitioner based in argentina a surgeon doctor and oncologist would you nilsa like to go one by one in spanish while i'm saying about uh, him in in english nilsa Yes of course. Yeah. So I will repeat a well known ayurveda specialist specialist and yoga practitioner based in Argentina surgeon doctor and oncologist. Okay, a eh, medical oncologist eh y también eh pra como médico practicante de la medicina ayurvédica en basado en Argentina. <laughs> chairman chairman and founder of ayurveda medicine department University of UAI Argentina fundador y y actual eh, encargado de toda la de la universidad o del departamento de lo que es Ayurveda en la Universidad de Argentina la cual no me sé bien las siglas discúlpeme <ríe> doctor UAI UAI en no way perfect founder founder of Spasismo International and he he will call it Spa Ayurveda first ayurvedic <laughs> health resort with 40 rooms at cordoba argentina remarkable uh -huh. y fundador de ispasismo que eh, bueno usted más que nadie conoce no el el que tiene las 40 habitaciones y es el primero en cordoba y en argentina y creo que todo en toda américa latina también founder of argentina yoga forum with more of 300 yoga schools associated with this forum 
fundador del foro de yoga, foro argentino de yoga con más de 300 escuelas asociadas a este foro. Dean of, of Diplomatic and Consular Corps, decano de cuerpo diplomático. Okay. I did it for you. Since, yes. since 2000, the year 2000, honorary consul general of India for several provinces in Argentina. Desde el año 2000, ha sido consul honorario general de la India en varias provincias dentro del país argentino. Uh, Dr. Sergio has rendered his Ayurvedic services and expertise and experience into Brazil, Uruguay, Paraguay, Colombia, Mexico, Bolivia at institutional and educational levels. Los servicios ayurvédicos eh, de Dr. Sergio Suárez se han enfocado en los diferentes países, Bolivia, Brasil y todos los países mencionados, y brindando todos los servicios ayurvédicos a estos, a estos países. One of the most, and we are very honored to have Dr. Sergio here. Dr. Sergio has been Ayurvedic consultant for ex-president of Argentina, Carlos Menem, and his family. Es un gran honor tenerlo aquí en esta sesión. Eh, y uno de los puntos importantes de recatar es que además de toda la experiencia, ha sido eh, consultante de, de Ayurveda, médico de Ayurveda, para lo que... Eh, ¿Name, Kundan? Could you repeat the name? I'm so sorry. Our ex-president Carlos Menem. El ex-presidente Carlos Menem. Who, who passed away recently. Oh. Yeah. Que recientemente falleció. Que descansa. Uh, And above all, Dr. Sergio is a great friend of India. So, y más que todo, es un gran amigo de la India. Uh, so this is the introduction of our, our honored Dr. Sergio Lai Suarez. I will also like to present at the same time, and then we will go further, for the, for the, for the, further to the session. The format of the session will be after presenting to all of you, Dr. Akhilesh Sharma formally, I would request Dr. Sergio, sir, to give his presentation. And then Dr. Akhilesh Sharma, sir, we will have first round of question. Each one of us will ask them one, one question each. Then again, second round. And then we will form formally, you know, conceptualize the, the session. And with our remark and comment, we will close the session. Yeah. So this is how it will be. Dr. Akhilesh Sharma founder of Global Foundation for Promotion of Ayurveda. Dr. Akhil Sharma, fundador de la eh, Fundación Global de Ayurveda. Board member and faculty at California College of Ayurveda, California, USA. Eh, miembro de la Junta Directiva de California eh, Institute Ayurveda en California, Estados Unidos. Former advisor for Ayurveda to Ministry of Health, Government of New Delhi. Y también eh, antiguo eh, consultante hacia el Ministerio de Salud en, en, en Nueva Delhi, en la India. Gobierno del Estado de Nueva Delhi, como se dice en español. Faculty and guest speaker at Hindu University of America, Orlando, Florida, Estados Unidos. Profesor y eh, conferencista invitado en el, el Instituto, en The American, en el Instituto Americano eh, de Conocimientos de la India. Hindu University. Hin uh -huh. Universidad de la Universidad Hindu. Hindu. Yeah. For last 16 years, he has been a regular visitor of Latin American countries, namely Colombia, Peru, Mexico, Bolivia and Panama with his lecture series and seminars. Por los últimos 16 años ha estado visitando y haciendo conferencias en diferentes países en América Latina como Colombia, Perú, México, Panamá, eh, entre otros. So Dr. Akhilesh Sharma is not new to Latin America at all. Así que el doctor Aquiles Sherman no es nuevo para la región, ya tiene alto conocimiento de nuestra región. 
he has pursued activities academic activities ayurvedic activities lectures and services from miami especially usa yeah eh, tenido muchos eh, ha brindado muchos servicios en términos académicos y también ayurvédicos um, desde su oficina o de su base principal central que está ubicado en miami en estados unidos and we are especially honored to have dr akhilesh sharma among his celebrity clients has been former president of colombia president as pastrana and his family estamos muy eh, muy agradecidos y un, eh, es un gran honor tenerlo con nosotros el día de hoy entre las celebridades a quienes ha, a, con quienes ha, ha sido consultor eh, se encuentra el el eh, el expresidente de colombia eh, el expresidente parsal pastrana pastrana pastrana, pastrana presidente pastrana In India, the most remarkable aspect of his Ayurveda and the way he looks at Ayurveda is, Dr. Klesh Sharma has always given priority to ensure recognition for acharyas and grassroots level Ayurveda experts at local levels, who are often ignored or shadowed by urban Ayurveda specialists. En India, eh, la práctica del doctor eh, Sharma, eh, su práctica ayurvédica se ha enfoca, enfocado en eh, darle como más luz a estos practicantes locales y también a los acharyas eh, para que sea más respetado este conocimiento a nivel general. Kundan, yes. um, doctor has actually, I think he has a connectivity issue because it was, it's out of the meeting. Okay. 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 So we can okay. continue. Mm -hmm. We can continue. Yep. Dr. Yep. Kle Dr. Klesh truly believes that Ayurveda can become a backbone of holistic healthcare for the entire world to embrace. Y eh, Dr. Aquiles Sharma cree que Ayurveda puede ser la base, como la columna y lo principal para eh, todo el manejo a nivel global de, de de lo que es la parte de la salud. While I have already presented our honorable members and managing partners and partners of Inlays, may I then formally request Dr. Akhilesh Sharma to speak on the understanding, opportunities and challenges of Ayurveda with perspective from India into Latin America. Meanwhile, we will await Dr. Sergio Lais to join us again. Over to you, Dr. Kles, sir. Thank you very much. So should I start or we should wait for, for Dr. Sergio to come in, sir? Uh, that is a great question. That's a great question. <laughs> Maybe uh, Kundan is going to try to reach him out, to reach out to him to see if he's having some other connectivity issues that we are not... Uh, that he was not able to make us aware of. Um, if you may allow me just a few seconds, may I call him then? Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. With your permission, sir. Thank you so much. I was about to say, Dr. Sharma, oh, you're having your morning tea. And I completely forgot that you're in, probably in the different time zone that I, I am. Yeah. It's, it's a, evening tea. Uh, evening tea. <laughs> I see, I see. Yes. Oh, boy. Let's see. I think... I, I, I think... I think he's having some connectivity issue, which is uh, which is uh, which is generally not there. So in that case, we may Maybe try to call him on WhatsApp. From a, yes, you know, yes, 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 yes. Sure. We are trying to call him. Generally, he is uh, very well connected. 
there's no issue from his side on internet at all uh and he's a person who is a who is regularly on the conference and the seminar on a daily basis so i yes I, one of the things that we will make sure is that we will make available this session um to him also as well after uh, after it 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 finish so we okay. are able to to move along and um generate the input and as soon as he has the stable connectivity he will be joining back in and then we will also be able to hear his insight okay so over to you dr klesh sir well thank you very much i would like to chant one swasthya mantra to begin the session okay and it's a very powerful healing mantra of health where we say Om Bhaisajjam Bhaisajjam Maha Bhaisajjam Raja Samur गते स्वा दिस इज वन ऑफ द एंशियंट पावरफुल मंत्र वेर वी से ओम भैषज्यम भैषज्यम महाभैषज्यम राजा इट मीन्स ओ द हीलर ऑफ द हीलर्स द रूलर ऑफ द रूलर्स द मास्टर ऑफ द मास्टर्स you have to prevail exist forever forever and forever and then we say samudgate swaha which means anything and everything in the form of negativity negativity of thoughts and emotions negativity of bacteria and pathogens Neg negativity within us within at the microcosmos level and negativity around us at macrocosmos level has to be offered to the holy fire to convert it into positivity so this is the literal meaning of the mantra om bhaisajyam bhaisajyam maha bhaisajyam raja samudgate swa so what a beautiful expression it is and the modern day investigations today reveal that even while chanting of this mantra if you do the microscopic examination of pathogens they stop growing under microscopic examination they are stunned listening to the mantra so this has been documented also in india so that is the power of mantra unnoticed unfortunately not well recognized and not well uh, you know propagated still in the western world i mean in india some people know about some of the aspects of mantra but not at in depth level so i generally start the session with this healing mantra or some other so talking about ayurveda the bigger perspective which we all know that if you go into the history of this human day they ask that how is to a medicine and people say well is to medicine starts from hippocrates i said no 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 but i didn't say about, about the history of modern medicine is to medicine must so there is a so if you say the era of, uh, of um, uh, dinosaurs you know which if which is if we are claiming that they are like few 12000 years old uh, on this earth then we need to understand that when a little baby of poor dinosaur had a stomach ache for any reason he over ate or he ate something wrong and he had a stomach ache so which physician would he go to so he okay. would obviously use some of the other remedy either drink some water eat some herb go to his mom and saying oh mom it hurts and pushing his own legs into his tummy and you know pushing it hard and saying oh 
it hurts, but it feels better this way. So doing a strange yoga posture or eating some herbs or drinking some warm water on the basis of instructions of the mother, all those things which he was doing were the medicine for him. So history of medicine has been beyond space and time. Uh, it was not only... Yeah. Yeah. With your permission, Dr. Akhleser, while you are speaking, you might as well give us some pause so that uh, our friend Nilsa and Dr. Preeti would be able to, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, give a review in Spanish to help us know and also Dr. Sergio to keep on, you know, uh, uh, have a better understanding and so that this particular session can be shared with Latin American people who uh, you know, may not be speaking Spa English, no? So, so after a few sentences, maybe after two to three sense. sentences, you may give us some time for your English to be interpreted into Spanish. Thank you, sir. Sure, sir. I appreciate this. Thank you for uh, you know, instructing me that. Uh, so saying so, should I repeat this last sentence? Or? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Last, last three, four sentences, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. As I was saying that if you go into the history of medicine, we have to go into the history of documentation of medicine. Uh, Nilsa, you want to say something? Nilsa, would uh, you like to try? Would you like me to voice it out right away in Spanish or would you would like to remain in the... No, yes. Make pauses and you give a translation Got it. and then I'll speak. Got it. Got it. Let's go okay. for it. Si hablamos de la historia de la medicina, esta es una historia muy antigua. Eh, so, for that, we have to go into the history of uh, script. Tendremos que ir a la historia de las escrituras. So, then, if you go into the history of script, Sanskrit is considered to be the mother tongue of all modern European languages, according to script experts. Y si miramos la historia de las escrituras, veremos que eh, el sánscrito es una de la del es como la madre de todas las eh, de todo lo escrito, especialmente cuando se habla de todos los idiomas eh, europeos que han salido de esto. So this proved and this became an established fact that history of documentation of medicine was in Sanskrit. Así que esta verdad que, que se volvió una, una verdad factual es que la historia de la medicina escrita está escrita en sánscrito. So, history of documentation of Ayurveda medicine is older than Chinese medicine. Así que la historia de la medicina ayurvédica es aún más antigua que la medicina china. So the way the masters have established, they said man is a miniature of nature. Y de la forma de la que, que se ha establecido lo que los conocedores o maestros de esta medicina es que el hombre es eh, como parte es una semilla de la naturaleza. And there has been a continuous interaction between micro and macrocosmos. Y hemos tenido una interacción continua entre lo que es el micro y el macrocosmos. So all the changes happening within us in the microcosmos level. Así que todos los cambios que están pasando de, entre nosotros y el, el micro macrocosmo, el nivel micro y macro del cosmos. Has direct impact from the macrocosmos. Tiene directo tiene impacto directo en, en el macrocosmos. So understanding that, then we start, when we start invading into the five element theory and we will see that we are talking about the same thing with different expression in modern atomic theory. Would you, would you like to, okay, okay. meanwhile, yeah, Nilsa, go ahead. Like would you like to, would you like to, Preeti, would like to uh, jump in? Help Nilsa, please. Hello? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Preeti? She's, she's okay. typing it. So we'll have to come back. We'll have to say that again for us. Dr. Okay. Kles, sir. Please, sir. Okay. Thank you, I'll, Nilsa. I'll 
Yeah. See, in modern, the interesting fact is, we say in modern medicine, everything is made up of atoms. In the medicine moderna, todo está hecho, eh, se decimos que todo está hecho de átomos. And in Ayurveda, we talk about the five element theory. Y en Ayurveda se habla sobre la teoría de los cinco elementos. So we will see that the modern atomic theory and five element theory have a striking resemblance. I, could you repeat that last one? I do not know that. There's a striking resemblance between the modern atomic theory and five element theory. Okay. Uh, hay una, una, una resemblanza muy grande entre lo que es la, la, las teorías modernas de la medicina y la teoría de los cinco elementos de la medicina. So if you look into the structure of atom, Así que si miramos dentro de la estructura del átomo, it contains neutrons and protons in the center. It contiene neutrones y protones en el centro. Which carry weight and mass. Que cargan peso y masa. That is the expression of earth element according to Ayurveda. Esa es la expresión del de elemento de la tierra de acuerdo con las, la, los conocimientos ayurvédicos. Then we say that in the structure of atom, electron moves out in the orbit. Y entonces decimos que en la estructura del átomo el electrón se mueve alrededor del, del eje. And it is a charged particle and that is the expression of fire element. Y esta es una partícula que viene con una carga y esta es eh, la expresión del de elemento del fuego. And this electron is continuously moving and that movement is because of Air element. Y este electrón siempre está en un movimiento continuo. Ese movimiento es la expresión del elemento aire. And then we say that there is a distance between neutrons and electron. Entonces decimos que existe una distancia entre los electro electrones y los neutrones. Because neutrons are placed in the center of the atom and electron is going in the periphery in the orbit. Porque eh, los neutrones están eh, en el centro del átomo, mientras los electro, eh, electrones están alrededor del mismo, en la periferia. Y esa distancia que existe entre, ambos, entre ambas partes del átomo, eh, esa distancia es conocida como Akasha, o el, la, la parte de la, eh, del espacio. And the moisture content or the humidity expression is the expression of water element. Y la humedad que está contenida, esa es expresada o en, eh, expresa el elemento, eh, bueno, del agua. So I would try to say, I'm trying to say is, are we talking about the same thing with the different expression? Y entonces mi pregunta es, ¿estamos hablando de lo mismo, pero de una forma diferente, con expresiones diferentes? Hoy la llamamos como la, la teoría de los cinco elementos y cinco mil años atrás también era conocida como la teoría de los cinco elementos. So likewise, this is one of the examples. Likewise, if you'll go into the history of documentation of the principles of Ayurveda. Este es un ejemplo. Y así de, de la misma forma, si vamos al, al inicio de la historia de la documentación o la historia de, eh, de Ayurveda. You will find the amazing correlations and understand how and why Ayurveda is the mother science of all the sciences. Vamos a encontrar... Vamos a encontrar muchas correlaciones en, entre ambas y, y nos vamos a percatar que Ayurveda es la madre de todas las ciencias. So, in a nutshell, what I'm trying to say, the history of documentation of Ayurveda for 5,000 years of vast experience. 
Así que en resumen lo que estoy tratando de decir, que la historia de Ayurveda en sus 5.000 eh, años de, de experiencia. Where the continuous research has already been done by the wise men or the holy men or the masters donde la investigación continua ya se ha, estado, se ha realizado por eh, maestros, conocedores, investigadores y también eh, bueno, religiosos de este, de este conocimiento. Ya en este momento lo único que tenemos que hacer es implementarlo y implementarlo a nivel masivo en la sociedad. That is the greatness of Ayurveda, but its significance has not been traveled through across the world. Y esto es, esta es la grandeza de Ayurveda, más su, mm, su significado y su, y su poder no ha sido esparcido alrededor del mundo. Because of the stupid reasons like language barriers. Por razones estúpidas como lo que es el problema de el, el, la barrera del idioma. So, what my prediction is that the day we will be able to completely express in a global language, understandable by the world, we will create revolution in healthcare system of the world. Y mi predicción es que en el momento en que nos podamos comunicar de una, con un idioma global, en ese momento vamos a, a romper todas las barreras que actualmente se nos presentan a nivel mundial. If you look into the of si miramos la, nos paramos hacia atrás y vemos la imagen completa en términos de lo que es salud. Like almost 70% diseases in the society today are related to lifestyle and autoimmune disorders. El 70% de las enfermedades que tenemos hoy día es, es, tienen que ver con eh, estilos de vida o des, des, desórdenes eh, que se presentan en la salud. And rest of the 30%, y el, sí, el restante 30%, Out of that, if we broadly classify 20% of them as surgeries and 10% of them as emergencies, that is where Western medicine has a very important role to play. Ese 30% lo, lo podemos dividir entre 20% que son cirugías y 10% que son emergencias. Allí en ese enfoque es donde la medicina eh, occidental es donde juega un papel muy importante. So this is the most effective USP or strength of Ayurveda that we can cater 70% of the diseases. We can address them globally. Así que este es eh, la, como la razón principal, la base de Ayurveda, que podemos a, solucionar o apuntar a resolver el 70% de las enfermedades a nivel mundial. And the preventive healthcare model of Ayurveda is so strong. Y la, med la medicina preventiva de Ayurveda es tan fuerte. If we are able to educate masses for that. Si, puede, si pudiésemos educar a las masas en este tema. Then disease process before it begins, it will finish. As, y, and y, people stay oh, go ahead, go ahead. People will stay healthy and they don't need to get weight to get sick and go to the hospital. Esa medicina preventiva aseguraría de que antes de que la persona se empiece a enfermar ya se curó y, y por ende nunca tenga que ir a pisar un hospital. Now, sí. one, one thing Ayurveda says that there is not a single plant on this earth which is not a medicine. Una de las cosas muy importantes que nos dice Ayurveda es que no existe una sola planta en el planeta que no pueda funcionar como medicina. And not only that, y no solo Ayurveda eso. Also, that there is not a single element on this earth which is not a medicine. No existe un solo elemento en este planeta que no pueda servir como medicina. That is such a vast expression and big claim. 
esta es una expresión muy vasta y es una, eh, un, un estado muy eh, grande al mismo tiempo, un testamento muy grande. Sí. Which most of the health com community leaders have no idea what the Ayurveda is talking about. Y la mayoría de los, de las, los líderes a nivel de salud no tienen ni la más mínima idea de lo que significa Ayurveda o de lo que el Ayurveda puede eh, ayudar. By saying that, what I'm saying is that if you, that Ayurveda is all around the world, but we know it with different names. Y lo que les quiero decir es que Ayurveda está en todo el mundo, solamente que lo llamamos diferente. Now, talking about the Colombian civilization or South American, Latin American cultures. Ahora, hablando sobre, oh, so sorry. hablando sobre las culturas, eh, la cultura colombiana, la cultura sudamericana. They have a big gold mine of medicinal plants. Tienen una so, mina de oro de plantas medicinales. Amazon forests. Lo que llamamos el Amazonas. Is a gold mine of Ayurveda. Es la mina de oro para Ayurveda. And nobody has ever taught or understood it properly. It's complete perspective. Y nadie uh, ha entendido adecuadamente todo lo que esto eh, significaría o conllevaría. I have, while going to South America, I had a privilege to touch base with some parts of the corners of Amazon jungles. And I was amazed to see the flora and fauna and the biodiversity climatic zones. Eh, las veces que he podido visitar eh, Colombia, he tenido la oportunidad de visitar las esquinas de lo que es la, la, la selva del Amazonas y he tenido la oportunidad de deslumbrar la increíble eh, biodiversidad eh, de la flora, la flora, la fauna que tiene este, esta, esta selva. Once this was my submission to one of the community leader, the president of the country. Y este said, uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Y este fue como lo que subrayé cuando eh, estuve allá y le hice mencionar a los líderes del país y a los líderes de, de esta área en el país. That if we are able to make farmers training program about identification and cultivation of the medicinal plants, In South America, que si pudiésemos entrenar a granjeros o agricultores en el cultivo de las plantas medicinales en Sudamérica, and make them understand that why to leave the drug business and really get to ma making the you know medicinal formulations from Ayurvedic perspective and make more money. Y si le hiciéramos entender que, que haciendo esto y cultivando las plantas podrían hacer mucho más dinero que lo que se está haciendo con toda la parte de lo que es el, el cultivo de drogas, <risa> sería una mejor, una mejor eh, manejo y más eh, monetario, les brindaría más fondos. And sell those products, finished goods, in the market of United States, where there is a lacuna of $62 billion for products of natural medicine or health food supplements. Y, y estos productos los podrían vender en mercados como en Estados Unidos, donde hay un mercado de más de 62 billones de dólares, donde de ese interés de la medicina eh, natural y la ayurvédica. So by doing that, it is a much broader vision and mission what I'm talking about. Y al hacer esto, extendemos toda la misión y la visión. Eh, y esto es lo que les quiero comentar. It will bring social reforms. Incluiría reformas sociales. Cultural reforms. Reformas culturales. Economic reforms. Reformas económicas, financieras. And spiritual reform, reform, y reformas espirituales en la sociedad. 
that is the dimensional aspect of this entire knowledge of yoga ayurveda and uh, meditation y eso es solamente una pequeña parte de lo que se puede lograr o lo que significa eh, lo que es toda la medicina de lo que incluye el yoga ayurveda y la meditación So this is the generalized overview I have given to all of you, a food for thought of unlimited, infinite possibilities of Ayurvedic perspective, which we can take forward. Y así que en gran resumen, un poquito algo para incentivar el pensamiento y el conocimiento eh, de todas las posibilidades que brinda uh, la, la medicina ayurvédica. Up till now, if anybody has any question, they can ask me. Si tienen algunas preguntas, este es el momento. Okay, we will... Uh... We will, uh, as I said, Dr. Thank you very much, sir, for giving us, obviously, as much expected from you, this perspective of linking the older science new, with the new modern science and where and how Ayurveda is being expressed and understood, right? Or misunderstood, or there's a lack of understanding. Taking cue of what Dr. Akhilesh uh, Sharma has just expressed and the famous book of In Spanish translation, La Ciencia del Ayurveda, translated, and the book, original book, uh, by Acharya Balakrishna, the author. Can we then say in Spanish, Reconocida, allow me to, to read this excerpt from this book, La Ciencia de Ayurveda, the science of Ayurveda, Reconocida como una de las ciencias de la salud más completas de la humanidad, la medicina ayurvédica propone recomendaciones que han perdurado a lo largo de los siglos y siguen vigentes hoy en día debido a su enfoque integral centrado en aspectos tan diversos como la alimentación, el ejercicio físico, el descanso, el estilo de la vida, las relaciones, la espiritualidad y el contacto con la naturaleza y una amplia variedad de cuidados diarios holísticos para la mente y el cuerpo. The book edition 2016, translation done in Spain, in Mostoles. So I found this to be a very, very uh, interesting uh, uh, excerpt of this book to what Dr. Akhilesh Sharma has expressed. Uh, can uh, Preeti or Nilsa resume this into English for our English uh, people? Just a resumption, just a, just a review in two, three lines. Um, it actually pre it summarizes very well what the Dr. Sharma had just advised, that Ayurveda is uh, the most complete um, medicine or um, system that has been created. And that throughout time, it's, um, well, I will say cure for lack of better words, is solutions or cures to the affections of people are have Perdure on change and still having the same effects on people time after time. That basically, I don't know, Priti, if you would like to add something else uh, to that in English. Before I welcome, before I welcome <laughs> Dr. Sergio Laiz, uh, el Ayurveda es básicamente una ciencia de múltiples aplicaciones que enseña a lograr un buen estado de salud desde el punto de vista de la fortaleza, la pureza y el, y el equilibrio. I repeat, desde el punto de vista de la fortaleza, la pureza y el equilibrio. Over to Nilsa or Priti, can you help? It talks about, what Ayurveda talks about is the, is 
is strength, purity, and balance. That is at the core of the science. Thank you so much. And with that, may I welcome formally Dr. Sergio Lais. Over to you, sir. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, ladies. Uh, thank you, Dr. Akilesh, for a beautiful summary and introduction of Ayurveda in a general view. Uh, I would like to go back many years ago, around the year two, uh, uh, 1990, uh, even before that, in 1980, that was my uh, first time that I got a connection with Ayurveda medicine in India. Somebody will translate into, uh, what do you want that I talk, in Spanish or in English? Tell me, no. because we have translator here. No, it's, it's, no, it's good. good. I think in English is fine. Uh... Profesor Suárez. Okay. Entonces yo le hago la traducción ahí cualquier cosa. <ríe> me, me, me bueno, traducí entonces. entonces. <ríe> iré. No, no, que después podemos, uh, podemos preparar el trans, el, el, eh, eh, la traducción. Usted puede hablar en, en inglés. Está al, al, al mismo tiempo, como yo dije, doctor Sergio, que esa grabación también se iría a varias instituciones y centros medicinales también y medicinales medicinas ancestrales alternativas en América Latina yo le ruego también que siga agregando el concepto tanto en inglés como en español perfecto Muchísimas gracias gracias doctor okay. ahora voy a hablar en español entonces eh, por favor eh, quería Mejor. decir que eh, en primer lugar eh, agradecía a todos ustedes que están allí por eh, la traducción y todo lo que están haciendo. Agradecer a Inlays Internacional y al señor Kundan por eh, organizar este evento, al doctor Aquiles Sharma, que ha hecho una a, síntesis eh, muy hermosa de lo que es el, el Ayurveda. Eh, yo quería referirme a una experiencia de contacto con la medicina Ayurveda que tuve en el año 1980. Uh, yes, sí. Ahí mismo, doctor Sergio, si sí se puede parar y yo puedo pedir la, el apoyo y la asistencia de Priti para, para ser interpretada al inglés, como un resumen. Esto, esto mismo que dije, lo dije en inglés. Ya, ya, ya lo dije. Ah, ok, ok, entonces sigamos. Entonces estoy por diciéndolo en inglés. Y luego en, en español. Doble, español. doble trabajo para doctor Sergio. Sí, sí, sí. está perfecto. Sí, perfecto. Está perfecto. Sí. Okay. No problem. Okay. Uh, in 1980, I had my first contact with Ayurveda medicine in India during a training uh, that uh, I received in, in India during the World Assembly on Vedic Science. En el año 1980 tuve el contacto en India en la Asamblea Internacional de Ciencia Védica. Uh, during that time, more than 7,000 people were gathered in this assembly, in this conference. Durante este tiempo, más de 7,000 personas de diferentes partes del mundo se encontraron en este congreso, en este seminario de ciencia médica. Where 7,000 people from around the world. From Argentina, we were uh, 23 uh, people. Eh, desde Argentina eh, fuimos 23 eh, personas a esta asamblea. Uh, during that time, uh, what we were receiving was a summary of the protocol to treat patients with Ayurveda medicine, to unify the criteria, to understand different protocol, purify them, and so we can apply them in all parts of the world. Durante este tiempo, en esta Asamblea de Ciencia Védica, 
lo que hicimos fue purificar el conocimiento para unificar criterios de aplicación de protocolos de medicina ayurveda en diferentes partes del mundo, de tal forma que no hubiera variantes de tratamiento de medicina ayurveda del norte o del sur o del este o del oeste, lo que se trató de hacer fue unificar criterios. At that time, I met one person there. I met several people, of course, but one important expert in Dravya Guna uh, called Balraj Maharshi. En este momento conocí muchísimas personas en esa asamblea internacional, pero conocí una persona así como muy especial que era el doctor Bah Balraj Maharshi. Uh, Balraj Maharshi, expert in Dravya Guna, he knew more than 7,000 plants with medicinal effects. Él conocía más de 7,000 plantas con efecto medicinal. Even him was ex uh, experimenting with the soma plant that is growing up in the hills nearby the Himalayas. También él estaba eh, haciendo investigación sobre una planta que se denomina soma, que crece en la ladera de las montañas del pre-Himalaya. Lo más parecido, the, the, the most similar plant uh, to the soma plant, it is the brahmi plant, o bacopa monieri, in uh, Latin. It's not the same, but it's quite similar. Lo más parecido a esta planta del Soma es la planta de Brahmi o Bacopa Monieri, eh, que no es lo mismo, pero es bastante similar. So, we invite at that time Dr. Balraj Maharshi to, go, to come to South America to do a comparison of the Latin American flora and the Indian flora. Entonces, en este tiempo, invitamos al doctor Balraj Maharshi para venir a América Latina a hacer una comparación de la flora autóctona de Latinoamérica con la flora autóctona de India. Uh, the idea was uh, find several plants with medicinal effect in Latin America. And we choose Brazil, because Brazil has the biggest part of the Amazonas. Entonces, nosotros de todos los países elegimos eh, Brasil porque eh, tiene la mayor, el mayor espacio del Amazonas en su propio territorio. Then, with uh, Dr. Balraj Maharshi, we were walking around in the, in the forests with a several other experts. That was in 1984-1985. Esto fue en el año 1984-1985, uh, junto con otros expertos. Uh, we, we went to, to Brazil and we signed an agreement with the uh, welfare Social Welfare Ministry of uh, Brazil to do that job. Entonces, nosotros firmamos un convenio de cooperación mutua con el Ministerio de Acción Social del Brasil. Then, we had, uh, at that time, two important jobs. One with Dr. Balraj Maharshi to train over 300 uh, doctors from Brazil uh, with Ayurveda medicine. Entonces, nosotros teníamos dos metas principales allí cuando vino el doctor Balraj Maharshi a Brasil. Una era capacitar a más de 300 eh, médicos brasileros en medicina Ayurveda and also to, to collect information about the Brazilian flora and to see if we can produce uh, medicines and remedies uh, from that flora. 
y la idea era eh, ver y analizar la flora brasilera para ver si se podían producir medicamentos ayurvédicos localmente. Also, we eh, were training more than 100,000 military people with Ayurvedic meditation. We were doing that job during one complete year in different provinces in Brazil. Al mismo tiempo, estuvimos capacitando en meditación ayurvédica a más de 100 mil eh, militares y policías militares de Brasil en diferentes ciudades de Brasil. Uh, we were doing that job during one year, and at that time, uh, Dr. Balraj Maharshi could do a research regarding the Ayurvedic flora of Brazil. Y en este tiempo, el Dr. Balraj Maharshi pudo eh, realizar una investigación sobre la flora autóctona de Brasil y su relación con la medicina ayurveda. Eh, eh, Kundan, yo te había mandado eh, cinco eh, archivos. ¿Podés subir el que habla de la investigación científica que hizo Balraj Maharshi? Por favor, ¿lo puedes subir vos ahí ahora? ¿Cómo no? Eh, en, pido, en la pido, la, sí, pido asistencia de, de Nilsa al tanto. Nilsa ya lo tiene, todas las láminas. Y... Now we will share the screen with this first research done by Dr. Uh, Balraj Maharshi. Ahí lo tiene. Muy bien, perfecto. Very good. Uh, that uh, was the first clinical trial on Ayurvedic medicine in the West. Dan. Doctor Suárez, parece que se le fue el audio. Truly sorry about that inconvenience. It seems that, you know, as always, our internet connections around, they sometimes take the best of us. So I think Dr. Suarez is, um, is experiencing a little bit of a internet connectivity issue at this time. Yes, because he has... Oh, there we go. Okay, Dr. I, I, you're in... Está, está en silencio el micrófono. No, eh, bien, listo. acá estoy nuevamente. Here I am again. So uh, we can remove uh, this uh, film. Okay, thanks. Very good. So we start at that time with this research. Nosotros comenzamos en, este, en ese momento con esta inve investigación. But now we have a big possibility to work with several Latin American universities to continue with several research projects directly with the possibility to produce. In Latin America, not only research, but also drugs, Ayurvedic medicine together with the Indian universities or labs. Entonces, esta es una oportunidad única para América Latina para trabajar en conjunto con los expertos médicos y universidades de India. If we uh, understand that, we can spread the knowledge and the information and the therapeutics of Ayurveda from all Latin America. Si nosotros entendemos esto, vamos a poder 
eh, difundir la medicina ayurveda con todos sus tratamientos, con todas sus medicaciones, con todas sus terapéuticas en la totalidad de América Latina. Uh, the most important newspaper of Argentina wa was doing some research regarding how many people are following natural medicine. Uno de los periódicos más importantes de Argentina hizo una especie de encuesta, una investigación de mercado, para ver cuántas personas se tratan o se tratarían con medicinas naturales. And we found, we found several interesting things. The first thing is that the 12% of the population of Argentina, it is vegetarian or vegan. Eh, lo que se encontró, lo primero que se encontró er, es que eh, el 12% de la población de Argentina es vegetariana o vegana. Pero además, but also uh, 70% of the population of Argentina would like to be treated with natural therapeutics. Y también se encontró que el 70% de la población de Argentina y de los países de Sudamérica se tratan, se trataron o se tratarían con medicinas naturales. Cuando hablo de medicinas naturales me estoy refiriendo a medicinas no alopáticas. So, I'm talking about natural medicines, not allopathic medicine. So, If 70% of the population would like to be in touch with natural medicine like Ayurveda, we have a tremendous scope, a tremendous future to develop a big scope of Ayurveda in the subcontinent of Latin America. Esto quiere decir que si el 70% de la población de los países sudamericanos y algunos otros de Latinoamérica están interesados en eh, atenderse o desarrollar programas terapéuticos de medicinas naturales como la medicina ayurveda, eh, tenemos un futuro realmente increíble para desarrollar en Latinoamérica con productos ayurvédicos. Ahora, now How many labs from India are in Latin America at that moment? We can say that only few. Uh, for instance, Himalaya drugs or Himalaya well-being is, of course, in the United States. From there are taking care of Latin America. And they have one branch in Guatemala. And what happened in the rest of the world? What happened in the rest of the Latin American world? ¿Qué quiero decir con esto? Que eh, hay un solo laboratorio que está trabajando como intensamente desde Estados Unidos, que se llama Laboratorio Himalaya, que a su vez tiene una sola sucursal en toda Latinoamérica, en Guatemala. Y desde Guatemala no está atendiendo a ninguna de los otros países. And from Guatemala, they are not taking care of the rest of the countries. So the, the Ayurvedic doctors from Latin America, they have to found or bring their products in luggage from India without importing them because they don't have the, the right authorization. Uh, ¿Qué pasa aquí? Los médicos ayurvédicos para poder atender a sus pacientes viajan con cierta frecuencia a India o viajaban por este tema de la pandemia y traían maletas llenas de medicamentos ayurvédicos para poder atender a sus pacientes. Then, we have to create in the majority of the Latin American countries, 
branches of Ayurvedic laboratories. Lo que tenemos que crear es eh, sucursales en diferentes países de América Latina de laboratorios ayurvédicos que se quieran instalar en América Latina. If we understand that, there is a, a business opportunity. Si entendemos esto, vamos a entender de que hay una oportunidad de negocios. Not only a business opportunity, but a opportunity to go into the society with the possibility to treat people, to cure people, and to bring the totality of the knowledge coming from India and coming from the Ayurvedic medicine point of view. Esto significa que no solamente hay un negocio eh, comercial para llevar a cabo, sino que además tendremos la posibilidad para traer desde la tierra del Veda, from the land of Veda, traer la medicina ayurveda y todo el conocimiento que la medicina ayurveda puede traer para curar, para mejorar la salud de las personas desde la mente, el cuerpo y el, comporti y el comportamiento. So, ladies and gentlemen, this first step that we are doing now can be a big step for Latin America with Ayurveda. Queridos amigos y amigas que están presentes en esta eh, interacción que estamos haciendo, este puede ser el primer paso de un gran paso para Latinoamérica. Will be a, a big possibility for all of us, for all the people of Latin America to be in touch with the deep knowledge of Ayurveda. Esto es una gran oportunidad para que todos los que estamos aquí y todos los que necesitan de Ayurveda en América Latina, a través nuestro, puedan contactarse con la medicina Ayurveda. Esta es la síntesis que quería presentarles a ustedes. This is a summary that I would like, uh, that I wanted to introduce to all of you. Muy buena presentación, Dr. Sergio. Very, very beautiful presentation. And what a beautiful, remarkable interface of language that parallelly you did between English and Spanish. So <laughs> e extra, extra, e I express extra gratitude for that. Thank you, Dr. Don't, don't ask me to talk in Telugu or in Sanskrit, please. Because you, you will be because, <laughs> because 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 you are you are dealing with India, so obviously India has 22 official languages, as we know. Most most of us we speak in Hindi, but may I also ask you to then at least learn one language from India, one language. That's all, or maybe two, one from North India. And one from South India. <laughs> having right, said right. that, having said that, beautiful, <laughs> such a beautiful presentation, such a beautiful interpretation and translation, conceptualizing everything. Uh, Dr. Sergio, thank you again. Uh, right. I would like to, I would like to, uh, uh, before go by the first round of the questions from the Inlays member and everybody present here, I formally like to welcome uh, my managing partner, Inlays, New Delhi, India, Pranjal Jain. Pranjal Jain is an electronic engineer and a specialist, scholar, research scholar, and uh, a specialist and expert on startup ecosystem. So Pranjal, welcome. Hi, everyone. Um, nice to be here in this panel. And uh, sorry, I joined late. I was having, I was in another meeting, but it is pleasure to meet you, Dr. Sergio, today. I have read about you and I have heard a great deal from Kundan. And uh, also I'm pleasure to meet Dr. Akhilesh. I've most of the time, uh, every time for my father, Sanjeev Jain, I've heard um, a lot about you, Dr. Sharma. So it's my pleasure to meet the two 
giants from india and from latin america thank you namaste thank you pranjal beautiful uh, i would just throw three concepts in in english and spanish and i would like uh, to have the first response from dr akhilesh sharma in english and dr sergio in spanish this time dr sergio you need not to interpret into english so we will have dr akhilesh speaking us in english and dr sergio in spanish uh first so i will sum this three points for dr akhilesh sharma sir for you to respond on that and have your reflections the ayurveda is not a symptomatic treatment but systemic treatment in spanish el ayurveda no es un tratamiento sintomático sino sistémico the importance of developing the immunity system with a specific reference to the phase the pandemic phase the huge health global crisis that we are passing through how do you see that in spanish la importancia de desarrollo el sistema inmunitario ante la pandemia bajo ese crisis global de covid-19 el último the simple remedies accessible remedies remedios sencillos y asequibles so these three points clubbing up together we like to have your point and notion dr akhilesh sharma and then followed by dr sergio in spanish over to you sir you are in mute you are still in mute <laughs> Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. <clears throat> so, answer to your first. I mean, are you asking me a question or what? You no. Want to... No, not not asking a question. Just your your views on that question. About question COVID. answer. We will be we will be starting after Dr. Sergio's comment on on this in Spanish. But before you, sir. So. Um, with respect to covid situation yes. you know i'll share this one interesting thing i was the first person ever to write a detailed article which was published in february last year in organizer a lead magazine from india about the ayush decoction perspective that how and why it would address the situation and this had been you know used in masses among many ayurveda institutes also in uh, gujarat in a big way and many of the positive claims have been you know summarized also so what i'm saying is this the tragedy is we have not paid attention and given due uh, recognition to ayurveda and follow its practice and principle because some of the basic herbs which we have been using for covid 19 patients which has been able to break down the rna virus shell also things like ashwagandha uh, uh which has been able to successfully break the outer shell of the rna virus and other immunomodulators like muleti like uh, giloe tulsi many of the other herbs which have been very strong expression of the immunomodulatory aspect which boosts up the immunity and strengthens the person as a whole so if you look into the ayurvedic perspective the bigger picture even in the western world where ayurveda says to be more vegetarian and all those people who have been strongly vegetarian in the western world also especially gujarati samaj of india and many other 
the uh, people from ISKCON, Hare Krishna movement, you see most of those vegetarians have been least affected by coronavirus because one strong reason has been is being strong vegetarian. Second strong reason has been usage of those spices which have been used not only for flavor, aroma and taste, where they have deep medicinal effect like haldi, for instance, which has been a bronchodilator, antiviral, antifungal, you know, multidimensional aspects, anti-cancer, immunomodulator, liver character. You know, it in many ways, haldi has been proven to be such a beneficial spice that's why exaggeratedly we call it queen of spices. Just to give you an example, I won't speak too long on this, but to tell you the truth, I have been very successfully able to eradicate COVID from many people's lives, just doing through online consultations and webinars, teaching them why we want to do a steam inhalation according to Ayurvedic perspective, keeping Vata Shleshmak Jwar in mind and doing steam inhalation with ajwain and mint leaves that has been one thing which has been able to sanitize our lungs or kind of sterilize our lungs and also control the multiplication of the virus. That's one thing. Second thing, doing gargling with the, you know, foot curry or saline water and following all the immunomodulator diet from Ayurvedic perspective has been helping. In, for example, if you talk about the yogic perspective, it has been proven now that pranayama has been the most effective tool and most of the yoga charges have been saved because when you do a vibratory movement during pranayama, you know, inhalation and exhalation, what happens, it produces more of quantity of nitrous oxide. And that has been a kind of a drug of choice, self-styled for revitalizing the, uh, the lung fiber. And with the same approach, the nitrous oxide aspect is being bring, brought into nasal drops composition, like giving nasal administration of those drops. That is what one of the US companies is going to bring very soon. But not calling it to Ayurveda, but through pranayama, our masters have been doing it for centuries. But we don't value it because there's no money involved in it. No, no pharma company makes money on that. So, you know, those... So the, some of the basic principles are so simple, cost effective, but it doesn't bring any revenue to anybody. That's why nobody pays attention to those things. And you know, the other very effective tool had been, which has worked very well, Ayush Kada was one thing, and I created packets and I distributed about 1 million packets free of cost to the Corona Warriors within Delhi. And we did a very successful experiment with this. And they didn't go for, ventilation, they didn't go for, you know, um, uh, fever for a long time and they recovered, recovery rate was very fast using that decoction with multidimensional application of having a bronchodilator effect also, respiratory strengthening effect also, like Giloy, Muleti, Muleti has been also integral part of the Chinese decoction. You know, they have might be stolen it from Indian perspective, that knowledge, but not calling it uh, military also, and calling it like a secret herbal decoction, which they have been using for their corona patients. And another aspect which has been totally ignored in this uh, scenario, if we, if we would have made a dhupan samagri, the fumigation material, which we made in controlling the plague in the year 1990, would have been very strong product which we could launch in India and sell it globally would have been a big, big, uh, you know, market for that, which is able to, you know, it's like a fumigation material, which is disinfectant, also killer of the virus, would have been very good and alternate to, to the chemically induced sanitization. So, you know, those kind of Ayurvedic practices and principles should be brought into limelight. And people like, uh, this organization can do that too. So, I mean, uh, I won't mind even if it comes from Latin America and we make the Dhupan Samagri and create it as a role model. That will open the doors of Ayur doors for Ayurveda in many ways. Another thing, like for instance, many play, we are using Anu Tail, for instance. Baba Ramdev is also making Anu Tail. This is an Ayurvedic composition, centuries old, 
and another composition called shadbindu tel which has been used as nasal drops now wherever these drops were not available overseas you know what i did i told them i make a simple recipe at home take 50 ml of sesame oil adding half teaspoon of turmeric or curcuma to it you know heat it up and put it in the bottle and use it like nasal drops imagine it is such a protective guard for protection and for prevention and cure both perspective have been very strong because all these proven broad spectrum bactericidal virucidal bacteriostatic bronchodilator you know all those aspects are the immunomodulator so these things are so damn simple and easy to make where with the, it becomes like a kitchen remedy and we don't pay any weightage because there is no uh, financial uh, uh, aspect involved and it is so simple but so universal easy to use so many of my patients in new york many of the ward boys nurses doctors working in covid wards have used it extensively interestingly they put a big sticker on the one of the wall of the covid 19 mentioning my number and saying those who want a natural medicine treatment for corona contact this whatsapp number and there was a continuous inflow of the phone calls coming in and with the appreciation later on i mean it has been documented now i'm asking them to send videos and such a positive feedback i mean beyond my imagination so you know this Wonderful. is the my my personal experience with covid 19 exactly wonderful doctor i knew that this will be you know an acceptance at large by the consumption and perception of ayurveda probably in the post pandemic world i think the world will relearn and 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 this will be a big learning for the world to 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 embrace ayurveda the same uh, uh, concept may i ask dr sergio's uh, uh, reflection in spanish Dr. Sergio, sir, over to you. Como sí. Eh, muchas gracias. Sí. Hem, hemos escuchado al doctor Aquiles Sharma expresando los beneficios preventivos eh, que da la medicina ayurveda. Eh, esta pandemia de por sí es algo muy grave, muy grande. Pero hay, hay algo más grave que eso, que es lo que se denomina COVID largo, que son las personas que han estado contaminadas o contagiadas con el coronavirus, eh, han salido del hospital y después de muchos meses continúan teniendo sintomatología de COVID similar o parecido a lo que tenían cuando estaban en terapia intensiva. Esas personas dicen que tienen fatiga crónica, que tienen una niebla mental que no les permite pensar bien, que tienen tos, que tienen un sistema inmunológico muy débil y la medicina ayurveda también tiene, esta, tiene una solución para esto que se denomina el COVID largo. La medicina ayurveda aparte de tener medicamentos ayurvédicos, tiene un tratamiento intensivo de eliminación de toxinas y radicales libres de los órganos internos que se denomina panchakarma. Es un set altamente especializado de terapéuticas ayurvédicas para eliminar radicales libres de diferentes sistemas orgánicos en periodos de siete días que pueden ser hechos en internación o de manera ambulatoria. Nosotros hemos y estamos tratando muchísimos pacientes que tienen este problema del COVID largo, del Long COVID Symptomatology. Y esto se está dando en todas partes del mundo, se están creando en el mundo eh, clínicas para tratar a pacientes de sintomatología post-COVID. Y lo interesante de la medicina ayurveda que cuenta con el sistema panchakarma que está plenamente comprobado en los últimos 5.000 años y plenamente comprobado por la investigación científica actual en los últimos 
50 años. Hay gran cantidad de investigación sobre este sistema que ahora puede ser aplicado para recuperar a los pacientes con el COVID largo. Por otro lado, está la, med la meditación ayurvédica que tiene como efectos aumentar el sistema inmunológico de las personas. La investigación científica dice que aumenta el interferón natural que el cuerpo produce cada vez que uno hace 20 minutos de práctica de meditación ayurvédica, a la mañana 20 minutos y a la tarde 20 minutos, eso genera una coherencia de la actividad eléctrica de las neuronas y esto permite que la niebla mental que se produce post-COVID pueda desaparecer y la persona se pueda recuperar muchísimo más rápido. Además, las personas con COVID tienen insomnio muy profundo y crónico, no pueden dormir y al no dormir no pueden recuperarse. Y lo que hace esta meditación ayurvédica es que baja el ritmo metabólico del sistema nervioso a menos 16%, que es el doble que el dormir. Esa, ese estado hipometabólico que produce la meditación ayurvédica genera una normalización profunda del estrés en el sistema nervioso y baja el hiperestímulo del sistema nervioso simpático que impide a las personas que han tenido COVID dormir adecuadamente. También hemos utilizado, como muy bien dijo el doctor Sharma, los tratamientos utilizando técnicas respiratorias que en Ayurveda se denominan pranayama, pero en la medicina moderna se están denominando integración neurorespiratoria. Entonces, pranayama o integración neurorespiratoria eh, puede ser aplicada para mejorar la capacidad pulmonar de las personas que han sufrido neumonía bilateral con el COVID. También las técnicas de integración neuromuscular del yoga, la ciencia del yoga que tiene un yoga restaurativo, más que hay variantes de yoga, pero en este caso nosotros aplicamos técnicas de yoga restaurativo para comenzar a mejorar la coordinación mente-cuerpo y la placa neuromuscular que ha perdido vitalidad, sobre todo en las personas que han estado en terapia intensiva. Hemos utilizado también la terapéutica del NASIA, el NASIA es la Administración Nasal de Medicamentos Ayurvédicos y se encontró que este procedimiento de administración nasal de ciertos medicamentos a través de las fosas nasales, la mucosa nasal que está rodeada del nervio olfatorio y terminaciones arteriales y venosas lleva todos los principios esenciales de ese líquido oleoso medicamentoso que se pone en las fosas nasales directamente a la estructura cerebral, mejorando la condición de las neuronas y nutriéndola. Por lo tanto, las personas post-COVID recuperan nuevamente la memoria estable, la claridad mental, la posibilidad de ser nuevamente creativos. Y también hemos visto que eh, la ciencia de los seis sabores, que es la ciencia nutricional de la Ayurveda, que contempla seis sabores de acuerdo al biotipo constitucional Bat, Pit, Ankafa, a cada uno de ellos les corresponde tres sabores o razas y no les corresponde otros tres sabores o razas. Entonces, hemos creado un paquete terapéutico que incluye nutrición, integración neuromuscular, integración neurorespiratoria, meditación ayurvédica para generar un estado hipometabólico vigilante restaurativo. Hemos creado la posibilidad de que las personas ingresen a un tratamiento intensivo de panchakarma, que nosotros también lo denominamos sistema de, adyu de adyuvancia natural ayurvédico, que sus siglas son sana, que termina sanando. Es decir, que la ayurveda no solamente tiene programas terapéuticos preventivos para el COVID, sino que tiene programas terapéuticos curativos 
y además tiene programas terapéuticos post-COVID para restaurar la inteligencia biológica que ha sido perdida por el impacto que produce el virus en la neurofisiología humana. Muy bien, muy bien descifrado, diseccionado y, y como, como digamos que las pruebas, las pruebas diagnósticas contemporáneas de la medicina moderna, diversas enfermedades crónicas y difíciles de curar desde la perspectiva pandémica y pospandémica y a través de examen del pulso y otros procedimientos diagnósticos en Ayurveda, ¿no? Entonces, como que esa, esa sesión también se trata y consta de todos hispanoparlantes y los amigos, compañeros y colegas de América Latina y el Caribe, creo que dejamos ahí y, y no vamos a, digo, tener la interpretación verbal al inglés, porque ya tenemos el chat hecho por Priti en inglés. Seguimos directamente a la sesión de pregunta. We'll go directly to the question. Uh, and uh, some of the, uh, you know, como digamos en español, inquietud, okay? Uh, some of the restlessness or the questions or the queries are there from the inlay side. Inlays, as I was discussing with Dr. Akhilesh Sharma, sir, that inlays will be taking it to the policy level with the help of Dr. Akhilesh Sharma to be discussing why and how Honorable Ministry of Ayush, Government of India, can look at the entire perspective of the promotional, the institutional, the educational, and the commercial perspective of Ayurveda into Latin America. The basic objective of this session with the help, assistance, and support from Dr. Akhilesh Sharma is this also. One side, Dr. Akhilesh Sharma will be assisting and helping and supporting our organization in LACE. And the other side, we will be getting and seeking the help and the assistance and support from Honorable Dr. Sergio Lais from the perspective of Latin America and India. And may I also inform the audience here that just before the pandemic began, Dr. Sergio Lais was in India helping people with the Ayurvedic approach. Am I not, Dr. Sergio? Yeah? Hello? Yes, 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 that is right. During the, the pandemic and the curfew in, in India last year, there was uh, more than 300 uh, people from Argentina and more than 1,000 from several countries that uh, were uh, there in India without the possibility to return home. So we have two possibilities to that time, to start complaining and crying or to do something for our people. And uh, I create, and uh, we can call a campus, medic medical campus to uh, treat and to cover all the necessities of the uh, Latin American people in, in India. And we were uh, doing around 500 medical attention during 60 days in New Delhi in the hotels where the people from Latin America were staying, also in uh, Rishikesh and also in Brindavan. We were doing that during 60 days and four embassies came to us to join forces uh, to, to do that, that job. Uh, was uh, the Argentinian embassy the Chilean embassy, the Mexican embassy, and the Equatorian embassy. We were doing that job with my team in India. That's right. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sergio. What a, what a, what a beautiful way of uh, uh, looking at the, the, uh, the relationship between India and Latin America uh, amidst such a huge global crisis that we are passing through. And, uh, and what, a, what a great job, Dr. Sergio, you have contributed. And you not only you know, 
I always say that there is no geographical distance between India and Latin America. It is just a psychological distance between India and Latin America. With that, yes, I, and and we were yes. doing that free of cost. This is very important also. Remarkable, remarkable, yeah. wonderful. And from India's side, uh, 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 you know, we would like to really, uh, you know, applaud and a humongous gratitude to be expressed with with a, with, with a huge clap, Dr. Sergio. You know. You know, we owe great deal to you, Dr. Sergio. You know, this is the time where frontline workers, doctors, uh, you know, uh, nurses, people who know about how to save the life are, are, you know, they have to speak out, they have to save the humanity and what we call it, uh, the world, insaniat, no? After all, yes. the humanity which has to persist, you know? So, and also we were taking care of Indian people more than 100 of these 500 were indian people so that was that was the that was so pandemic or pre pandemic you know got india and latin america together through 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 the work and the services and the eyes of dr sergio lies again thank you so much thank you so much uh, we go through the the question very quick ones now we will be uh, now running short of time so let's go directly to the first question okay to Dr. Sur Professor Suresh. Suresh, sir, over to you. Hello? Yeah. Uh, can yes. you hear me? Yes, sir. Go ahead, yes, sir. sir. Yeah, OK. Yes, Go ahead, sir. So uh, fortunately and unfortunately, uh, my basic master's degree is in international health and policy research from University of Copenhagen. So I have been teaching public health and community health in uh, the medical colleges and then only the disaster management came in the picture so from my point of view i don't want to take much time i'll i have already posted the challenges yes what you have been talking about one thing you should have included one community medicine person because without changing the behavior change communication of the community those who are going to use it uh, talking technical terms how much it is going to be uh, practical i'm not very sure number one number two uh, as a part of my UNFPA experience in National Rural Health Mission uh, with the government of Orissa, one thing we learned, uh, Indian medicine, especially Ayush, is uh, a preventive medicine. It is a way of life. It is a practice. It is not a medicine system. It is like uh, Dr. Akhilesh was talking about. Uh, though uh, uh, for, the, for the COVID, so many medicines are there, and everywhere popularly for preventing thing, they are using this inhalation of uh, steam with, with, the, with the herbs. And so preventive is okay, but curative part is always allopathy is taking over because it's a standardized one globally. And uh, second thing is, uh, Dr. Sergio, thank you very much for the wonderful presentation. You are talking about Himalayas. There is one area, I don't know whether you have did a study or anything about this Western Ghats, which is having the rich uh, uh, herbal values in the Southern India. Western Ghats is one of the most rich uh, herbal uh, area, like Meza, where we get almost 7,000, uh, more than 7,000 uh, uh, plants of herbal plants. So behavior change communication of uh, way of life using uh, Ayurveda as a curative medicine is the only part. Uh, and the challenges are already posted in the chat. You can think about it and you can answer it. And if it take time, it will take long time. I can go uh, breadth and length. It will take long time. So four questions I have given. Ayurveda epistemology. That is epistemology means the theory of knowledge, especially with regard to its methods, validity and scope, and the distribution between justified belief and opinion. So uh, people's practice, because the lifestyle after globalization is in a in a rapid way, every day, new medicine, new assets, especially global food. We are not used to this uh, uh, Western food like, uh, 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 what is that? Uh, the burgers and, and Western foods. We are not used to it till 1990. Uh, still, it was, it was uh, Indian uh, food was primarily was done. So this, most of these new diseases have come in the picture as per the research. It's all after the globalization. Uh, pizzas and burgers and, and Chinese food. It's a modified Chinese food. It's not getting old here. So that's one thing. Number two is Ayurveda, how you are going to standardize the Ayurveda educational system. Number three, Ayurveda herbal marketing scenario, even though the government 
as Kundan was pointing out, uh, Ministry of Ayush uh, can help you all this thing unless the people are not being educated about this, the value system of Ayurveda as a common platform. Uh, it's going to be a challenge. And now fourth one is how we are going to standardize the Ayurveda research and development. These are my uh, points to, to place in the fourth. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Professor Suresh, sir. Uh, for that uh, critical angle and the proposition that you have done, the proposal basically. Inlays will be looking into it with the help of, of Dr. Khilesh Sharma and Dr. Serkio at the same time, right? And uh, just to inform you that our, our internal expert community health, Dr. Ulas, partner of Inlays was here, but because of the because of the other schedule, he had to, he had to rush from here. So, okay, over to uh, Sanjeev, sir. For your question, you can have a question directly uh, put across to Dr. Akhilesh Sharma or Dr. Sergio. You may like to you may like to ask question to Dr. Sergio preferably. Sanjeev sir. You are still muted. Uh so, so, there we go. Okay. Yes, yes. Thank you. So, so, so Dr. Akhil says uh, this one, uh, this is the something ajwain and menthol. So I, I have a good questions from your side. Why not we fumigate in the air uh, this, this house in an in a aromatic form? Like we are keeping car perfumes or car gels. So Right now, thymol, thymol, which is the basic element of the ajwain, is also recognized by the US EPA, United States Environmental Protection Act, as a sanitizer. So why not uh, this uh, herbal sanitizer is not promoted uh, as a sanitizer, as a fumigant? And along with this, uh, India also, you know, this is Amradhara. It's the composition of camphor, thymol, and menthol. So. I was working in the Maharshi Ayurveda, so we fumigate in the air rather than in 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 US. All people are fumigate with the formaldehyde. So in a home also we can fumigate uh, the thymol and then also menthol and camphor in a in a such a manner or in an aerosol format. So why not? It is popular. Uh, this is a thing of thought. We can we can formulate. We can do lot of products from India and also help in your company or your areas to fumigate naturally, uh, natural house in a fumigation format. Well, very, very well said, Sanjeevji. That's a very valid point. See, the, what we are lacking is lack of vision where there should be a marriage between the technocrat expert or the subject like you and an Ayurveda Acharya. Understanding the chemistry part and also from Ayurvedic perspective and making a blend of it. That is need of the day. So you are very right. I think we should take Sanjeev's expert opinions from time to time. He is part of our expert team also here. So, I mean, people like him, we need more and more. And, you know, sky is the limit. We can work upon these subjects, of course. It's a Excellent. very good great work. Yes, take a note, Sanjeev, sir. Thank you for looking at from the, as he said, why and how there could be a confluence of the technical person and the acharyas, the socio-cultural perspective. So the, the, there should be a confluence of the knowledge between that purely technical and purely from the socio-cultural perspective. Uh, I think Dr. Sergio is still there. He's in the room. He's no, the room. Uh, actually, uh, it seems that our... Enemy and frenemy is taking advantage of us today, especially with Dr. Sergio. Uh, it's because the internet just, he was completely kicked out. So I think it's an internet issue again. Mm -hmm. Again, okay. Yes. Uh, because I, I would like to, because I would have requested uh, you and Preeti to ask uh, Dr. Sergio a question in, 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 in Spanish. So for the, uh, for our people here in Latin America, no, that is the main, mm -hmm. anyway, I ask, I request Preeti to pose a question to Akhilesh Sharma, sir. Meanwhile, Dr. Sergio joins in. Dr. Sharma, I belong to a family of long lost Vedacharyas. Uh -huh. There is not a single Vedacharya, there is not a single Ayurved 
uh, uh, practitioner in my family now there are only big stories that my grandmothers uncles used to be famous uh, vedyas and my fathers grand uncles used to be famous but we don't have so it's a so uh, linking it with that what we do have is we have a very strong in house practice of uh, uh, kitchen medicine cabinet that is a lot that is going on there now what i have realized is there are that there are a lot of plants uh, this is connected with uh, uh, with mr suresh's question in, in a very small part that there are a lot of plants that we use uh uh for pain management or for uh, uh, for uh, infusions very um, there are a lot of plants that are there which are wild plants which just grow along the roads when we go and uh, when we go to uh, an ayurvedic practitioner they just show us a leaf or two and they say you can just pluck it from there and you will have enough now the question is that with increasing urbanization we will lose this wild growth also if it grows in our neighborhood we don't have an inventory and we don't have uh, educational material what mr suresh was saying educational material that catalogs these plants in our neighborhood which uh, even i cannot name if i can't name in my society of 250 houses i can vouch that nobody can uh, so uh, a an anthology a booklet uh, for children a picture book some form of uh, information that can be uh, that can be disseminated among the people easily so that we can identify our plants if we can identify our plants we can save them and we can use them and it can become a practice but if we can't identify them most people can identify the tulsi the neem uh i think it ends at the aloe vera these days yes that's it most people are not able to identify most plants because and there is there isn't enough material that is handy which we can keep at home and show to our children that this is the plant see i tell you it's very interesting question you asked i took this initiative sometimes i started a project called taking ayurveda to schools and colleges where i started i started going lecturing there giving say name of selective plants like 12 to 15 plants telling them about their medicinal properties teaching them about the kitchen pharmacology and the recipes how to make them first how to identify those plants and teaching their medicinal properties so we need to really institutionalize in simpler forms to school and college students school students from the senior levels from 10th 11th 12th grade and of course at the colleges also what happened is 400 years of uh, you know muslim invaders in this country and 200 years of british imperialism after that in last 600 years we lost so much of it and then to lord macaulay's education system also kind of sidelined the entire indian heritage cultural knowledge and when we try to propagate it sometimes some forces you know come forward they say oh well you want you want to do the saffronization of the system well and i entire vedanta philosophy itself has been way of life it was not merely a system of healthcare it was a system of physical mental and spiritual well being it was art of being it was so beautifully narrated by our masters say ayurveda is not only Uh, for the preventive health care or for the curative health care it is art of being art of being what art of being right art of being balanced art of being stable within art of being stable physically mentally and spiritually not only the physical body so it was a complete perspective so we need to 
make our children understand by institutionalizing the subject make them understand that ayurveda is not only a health your system it can be as a part of your daily life to understand the basic tips of dinacharya ritucharya and knowing about the medicinal plants and many of those recipes trust me it will cut cut down the healthcare costs so much that economically poor countries like entire india you know asian continent and also talking about entire south america will remarkably benefit from it today look into american healthcare system the modern medicine system it is falling apart it is failing there because it is so damn expensive that ordinary people can afford it right so this so, material that you have this right. material that you that you have you must already you must you must have really compiled this educational material yeah some part of it i have done uh, so it is a self styled self made kind of a material which i'm propagating and you know uh, so can we the... collaborate here and bring it out in a more uh, interactive format which is more updated for uh, you know children sure. being the best yeah. market of these things can it be done in this way here i'm giving an example that i mean we can work on multi dimensional aspects institutionalizing you know i call it three t's treatment teachings and training programs imagine uh, dr sarjo rightly said about panchakarma i'll share with interesting concept with him you see just like in a us model if you want to make it a business model let me share this secret with you i shared with dr deepak chopra long time back because i worked with his father as an associate for a few years in india there are 16000 licensed massage therapists in us licensed massage therapists they have a national certification board for therapeutic massage and body work now imagine if all these 16000 licensed massage therapists they are already licensed if we are able to give them panchakarma training program as per dr sergio's statements and make them understand the benefits of panchakarma you know we will inject <laughs> massage therapy of ayurvedic perspective in those 16000 professionals you know so imagine the business there we have to make the oils then we have to sell the oils and once people start getting you know make, taking the taste of mahanarayan oil and using it on their daily basis as a massage this thing i mean sky is the limit so it, no, it has just develop the vision and you know just do it Dr. Akhilesh Sharma, thank you, uh, Dr. Preeti, for posing this question on behalf of Inlays as the partner, as the managing partner. Uh, Inlays is is watching it. Inlays will be studying it. Inlays will be, uh, you know, analyzing and evaluating all the possibilities of this particular business model, the new model where we will tie them again. and have dr akhilesh sharma and dr sarkio the other side as our advisor as our masters as our supporters you know i would now thank you uh, preeti and thank you dr akhilesh sir uh, nilsa would you like to pose a question to dr sarkio in spanish please in spanish please go ahead nilsa gracias A ver, yo Por tengo favor. una la, la curiosidad de mi lado está en ver cómo esta esta medicina ayurvédica eh, se puede llegar a transmitir pues en nuestras regiones por lo menos acá en Panamá tú no hablas mucho de la medicina natural de, de los eh, curanderos eso es muy conocido acá sí <ríe> hay hay y no no son muchos pero los que hay son de generaciones y generaciones y generaciones que han sido reconocidos cómo se podría eh, implementar o a, apoyar a que estas eh, personas que ya se dedican a esto tienen el conocimiento por lo menos de las plantas nativas del país que se cultivan acá en Panamá eh, o que son muy conocidas con los nombres locales también puedan tener este conocimiento de la medicina ayurveda esa sería mi pregunta qué propuesta o qué podríamos nosotros eh, Sí, cómo podríamos movernos hacia ese ámbito para ampliar ese conocimiento de ellos y por lo tanto ampliar las posibilidades de la población global en, en esa mejora. Pues en, 
tener ese acceso? Bueno, Nilsa, muy buena tu pregunta y la vamos a encauzar a la respuesta de la siguiente forma. Nosotros en el año 1996 inauguramos la primera cátedra de medicina ayurveda en una universidad en Argentina para poder capacitar a médicos, terapistas, a médicos y a, a terapistas en medicina ayurveda. Perdón. Entonces, lo que hemos hecho es, primero, darle un nivel universitario a la medicina ayurveda para darle una seriedad extrema. Porque si no, la gente va a seguir considerando a la medicina ayurveda como eh, la gente que lo ha recibido, que son curanderos. Entonces van a pensar que es una práctica de curanderismo. Debemos recordar que la Organización Mundial de la Salud la entidad suprema en el planeta que habla de las medicinas, reconoce formalmente la medicina ayurveda a través de una resolución que es la 5040, que indica de que es un sistema médico que tiene todas las especialidades, incluyendo cirugía. El primer cirujano del planeta fue el doctor Shushruta hace muchos, muchos, muchos años atrás. Y él desarrolló prácticas terapéuticas quirúrgicas que en la actualidad todavía se siguen eh, eh, explicitando y enseñando en el mundo. Entonces, primero debemos darle un nivel universitario y capacitar a médicos en medicina ayurveda. El médico ya pasó por todas las materias, tiene el título en la mano, lo único que necesita es una capacitación de uno o dos años y se transforma en un médico ayurvédico clínico, que viene a ser un médico familiar que puede ver simultáneamente todas las enfermedades y utilizar todas las terapéuticas de la medicina ayurvédica. El segundo punto es obviamente hacer simultáneamente en esas universidades eh, investigación científica para demostrar, más allá de lo que ya existe en el mundo de investigación científica, Demostrar in situ en cada país qué hace la medicina ayurveda siguiendo el método científico, que es el método universal de investigación. El otro punto que debemos tener en cuenta es capacitar a terapistas ayurvédicos que son los que llevan adelante ciertos tratamientos parecido a lo que hace una enfermera en un hospital. Entonces, nosotros capacitamos también a los terapeutas, capacitamos a psicólogos en psicología ayurvédica, capacitamos a personas que hacen ciertos medicamentos, que son farmacólogos o personas que eh, han estudiado una carrera en, en Latinoamérica que se llama licenciatura en farmacia, que son los que pueden estar haciendo esto. Entonces, nosotros comenzamos con esto en el año 1996 en la Universidad Interamericana de Buenos Aires, que es una de las universidades privadas más grandes de Argentina. Tiene 50.000 alumnos, eh, tiene todas las carreras de grado, incluyendo medicina, alopática, abogacía, arquitectura, etc. Es una universidad aprobada por el Estado. A partir de allí, las universidades estatales de Argentina, a los pocos años, en el año 2002, empezaron a abrir otros eh, cursos de capacitación de médicos y personal no médico en medicina ayurveda. Hoy en Argentina hay cerca de eh, siete, ocho universidades, incluyendo la Universidad Católica, que es la más complicada en términos de aceptar cosas diferentes a lo tradicional, y hoy estamos con siete u ocho universidades en Argentina que enseñan medicina ayurveda a médicos y al público en general que tengan algún tipo de especialidad paralela a los médicos. Eso mismo podemos repetirlo en todos los países de, de América Latina. Nosotros tenemos el programa de estudio 
tenemos los médicos capacitados para enseñar Ayurveda en un primer año y en el segundo año para médicos, y esto se puede hacer en menos de, de lo que creemos poner en marcha estos programas universitarios en los diferentes países. Entonces, esto nos nivela para arriba la experiencia de validar la medicina ayurveda como un sistema médico. Nosotros queremos enfocar esto desde ese punto de vista. Y si lo hacemos desde este punto de vista, le estamos dando seriedad, los médicos van a prestarle muchísima atención porque lo estamos poniendo en un nivel muy alto, estamos levantando la vara lo más alto posible a nivel universitario y esto va a permitir a los gobiernos que también le presten atención. ¿sí? Y en esto, si nosotros lo hacemos de esta forma, la prensa va a acompañar, la investigación científica va a acompañar, los políticos van a acompañar haciendo leyes locales para favorecer todo esto. Así que esa sería mi recomendación. Muchas gracias. Muchísimas gracias, doctor Sergio, por, por, por ese plan y ese planteamiento. Y nuestra organización, de verdad, vamos a trabajar junto a crear la nueva perspectiva de Ayurveda o la nueva perspectiva ayurvédica, tanto en Centroamérica como Sudamérica y el Caribe. Entonces, uh, creo que ya ha llegado el momento de cerrar la sesión. We have almost reached on the end of the session. So, my huge gratitude to Dr. Akhilesh Sharma, sir, and to Dr. Sergio Lai, sir, for being here to enlighten us, to guide us, and to support us. We will need you in future very soon because we will be preparing a concept note and then we will widen the horizon of this kind of exper expertise and experience that both of you gentlemen have had in last more than 25 years or 30 years down the line. So then uh, with that, I mean, uh, any other uh, uh, word of gratitude or word of thanks from Nilsa and Preeti, please. Muy agradecidos eh, con, eh, por, por todo el tiempo que nos, nos han brindado y por todo el conocimiento. Tal como dice Condán, vamos a, eh, nos abre las puertas a hacer muchas cosas, mucho que hacer. Eh, pues solamente con mi pregunta yo creo que demuestra todo lo mucho que hay que hacer. <ríe> Entonces, este, muy agradecido por el compartir del, del conocimiento. So, thank you so much uh, for the time, for uh, sharing the knowledge and um, with the question that I ask and the language that I use, uh, I believe it, it's kind of, at least in Spanish, it just showcases how much it's needed. Um, all of the details as the study and the sharing and, and the exploration and bringing that knowledge to not just uh, Panama in this case, but all of the Latin America. So I thank you so much for the time and we will uh, hopefully soon be enticing into more, more work. So from, from my part and from um, in Leis, Panama City, myself, thank you very much for joining us today. Priti. Priti, algunas palabras en ambos, ambos idiomas, tanto en inglés y español, por favor. Muchas gracias, doctor Sergio. Ha sido, ha sido un honor escucharle y, y y saber y conocer todo el trabajo que usted ha hecho en, en, en muy pocos años, diría yo, que, que la ciencia ayurvédica es muy antigua y usted, usted, um, um, usted ha podido uh, llevar esa ciencia de, de mi país a su país y a todo el continente y les deseamos mucha, mucha suerte con esta misión global que usted tiene. Que, y muchísimas gracias. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sharma. It was amazing listening to you. And like I said, I am, um, I am in a very deep way associated with the Ayurvedic science and I, do personally believe that uh, 
all this hard work and all this dedication is uh, we are going to materialize it in 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 some in some ways that are more suited to our times because we've got amazing ideas from people like uh, mr sanjeev jain and pranjal here uh, and um, i'm sure we are going to match the two we are going to bring the past into the present and uh, make it a future thank you thank you preeti otra vez dr sergio muchísimas gracias y nos vemos pronto a través de una nueva conferencia muy pronto doctor thank you very much Muchas gracias. Hasta la próxima. Hasta la See próxima. you soon. Thank you, Nilsa. Thank you so much for a great work. Thank you and thank you for troubling my my my, my interpreters and my, and and the technical people. Thank you, Priti, again. Sanjeev, sir, thank you so much for being there. We we will be coming back to you very soon, sir. I will be. I think you're in mute. If you're saying something, oh, there you go. One thing I have to say to Doctor, can I say, Kundan sir? Please go ahead, sir, quickly. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, Doctor Sergio, you are in uh, dealing in spa range or spa, so I uh, we can give you a lot of support in the products like Aveda in 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 US. You heard this name, Aveda products? Aveda. We know we know the the Aveda products. We so, are so producing. We can, we, yeah. Also so, our. On products, we just launch uh, a series of uh, beauty products for ladies that uh, are in the Argentinian market. But we are, we have a lot of interest in what you are telling me now. Yeah, yeah. So we can help you in the process validation and the uh, efficacy and lot of other things in the Ayurveda point or the chemical engineering point of view. Even even uh, packaging and uh, stability point of view, the efficacy of the products. So Good. that's my request. In future, you can contact me if any any need is there. Thank you. Yes, I I, I have interest on that. Thank you very much. We will be in touch. Yeah, thank you. Great, great, great. Thank you again, sir. Everybody, thank you. Right over there. Muchísimas gracias, Travis. Bye bye. Thank